U.S. Highbush Blueberry Council and the other funded by the National Institutes of Health, uh, National Institute on Aging. Um, in one study, um, we uh, uh, did a randomized placebo-controlled trial with older adults with mild cognitive impairment, which is a risk condition for Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. And um, they, uh, those participants received uh, blueberry powder, whole fruit, freeze-dried blueberry powder, or placebo powder daily for 16 weeks. And uh, we performed pre-intervention pre and post-intervention uh, uh, memory testing and cognitive testing as well as brain imaging in a subset of the subjects. And what we found is that the people that received the blueberry powder performed um, better on uh, some cognitive tasks, including uh, uh, tasks of motor speed, uh, memory, uh, semantic access, um, and a few other cognitive tasks. In addition, we found that the blueberry supplemented subjects uh, showed increased activation in certain regions of the left hemisphere of the brain. Um, and that, that did not occur with the placebo powder subjects. Our other study um, was similar in design but had a, uh, involved a different population. These were people with, um, who were healthy older adults who did not uh, qualify uh, as being classified with mild cognitive impairment or dementia, of course. And this was a, a larger study and the supplementation period was uh, longer. It was 24 weeks as opposed to 16. Uh, the findings weren't as uh, robust in that study in the sense that we we did have a significant effect on a memory task, and um, and the other uh, interesting uh, result was that the, the participants um, felt uh, felt like they were performing better in their everyday lives. So we had an instrument that systematically assessed uh, their functioning and everyday activities, and those who received the blueberry powder. Uh, indicated that uh, they had a better sense of well-being and uh, were uh, uh, making fewer memory mistakes and were uh, less inefficient than they had been than the, those that received the placebo powder. Great, thank you. Do we have any questions? Hi. So it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry magazine. Um, I just wanted to ask, what exactly is new about this particular work, about your findings here? Because I, I understood that blueberries had already been linked to improved cognition. Um, there's been a few sort of reports of that. So could you just explain a little bit more about your results? Um, also, how much um, improvement did you see? Can you sort of quantify that at all? And were there any gender differences, for example? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, there's a, there's a very large uh, basic science literature, uh, molecular studies, cellular studies, and animal studies on, on blueberries that demonstrates uh, cognitive enhancement and, um, and several of the mechanisms that we believe are responsible for these effects. But as you said, there are only just, just a few human studies, and um, there need to be many, many more of those. So our lab completed uh, a prior uh, blueberry juice study uh, before uh, what we've uh, done more recently, um, and other labs are beginning to do this this kind of work as well. I think our our lab is the one that's mainly focused with um, with a uh, memory changes or cognitive changes with aging. Um, so it's important that that we continue to do this work and other other programs to do it as well to replicate what we're finding, and then there. Are, um, we need to know much, much more about the mechanisms. And we don't know what the proper dose is. I mean, we're sort of guessing based on past work about dosage. The period of the intervention, we increased it in these studies over what we did previously, which was just 12 weeks. But it's not clear that that provided more benefit. I mean, there are a host of questions that have to be answered with human research. Any other questions? Yes. Please state your name and affiliation. Over here. She raised, no. she raised her hand too. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is Elizabeth Hawkins from London School of Journalism. Um, I just wondered why did you give um, 
these freeze-dried blueberry powder rather than fresh blueberries? That's my first question. And the second one is, for the second study, um, why did you also give the blueberry powder and the fish oil and fish oil powder? The reason we, we moved to the powder was um, primarily for better control because we, we were able to uh, package the powder in individual dose packets. Um, but also, um, as a, it, it really wouldn't be possible to give fresh fruit or even frozen fruit um, uh, because of the storage issues of that and the, um, the early decay with the fresh fruit. Um, and, and powder is much more convenient than juice. It's lighter. Uh, the bottles don't break and color the cars of our participants purple um, and things like that. So, um, and uh, I want to emphasize that this powder was derived from the whole fruit. So the fruit is, is freeze dried and um, and milled. Um, the other major reason uh, to use a powder as opposed to a fruit is the placebo, the control substance. Um, it's, it's much easier to develop um, a placebo product that looks like the blueberry powder and uh, tastes like it and has the same carbohydrate load uh, as, the, as the true blueberry powder. And that would be very difficult with, with fruit. Thank you. Bela Buslig, uh, Office of Public Affairs. Uh, the f f powder, what, uh, what form did you actually introduce it to, uh, to the people? Like, uh, I can't imagine that you, you'd give them a spoon to, uh, to, uh, to eat it with a spoon. Uh, so it had to be, be either uh, baked into something or, or, or put into a drink or something. All right. I think some, some of them did actually eat it with a spoon, but our general instruction was to mix it with water. And we actually provided these little um, electric frothers. They, they, had, they were around and, right. and stirred up to, uh, to make it um, a more consistent mixture. Uh, we didn't disallow putting it on cereal or mixing it with yogurt or, or something like that, but, um, but I think most people followed the instruction to just mix it with water. So it was taken. It was taken in a drink form. Uh, do you have any idea what uh, what are, uh, are the compounds uh, like? Like basically, any specific compound that uh, that that's more active than others? I mean, there there are tons of flavonoids of of, of yes. sorts in there. Yes, um, and many metabolites too, which we discovered in this work. Um, there are five of the of six major anthocyanins, which are flavonoid, uh, right. subclass of flavonoids, are contained in blueberries. And based on the, uh, the animal work I referred to earlier, that it's, it's likely that um, the beneficial effects are associated with the consumption of anthocyanins. Now, would, uh, would you think that, uh, that uh, I mean, I know this was an experiment, uh, that, uh, Perhaps it would be better, uh, uh, better if, if people were encouraged to uh, eat a cup of blueberries or uh, uh, the same uh, dosage. After all, it, sh it would taste better regardless of how you reconstitute the powder. Well, I think, I mean, the, uh, one of the reasons we went to the powder is because it does represent the whole fruit, and there's really not that much difference between the, the in the composition of the powder and the composition of the whole fruit. I mean, the, the fiber's in there, the skin is, is milled with the rest of the fruit. So it, it does, from, from one perspective, it does represent the whole fruit uh, in that way. I agree with you, the, it's more pleasing to eat a blueberry than it is to eat, drink a cup of blueberry powder dissolved in water. But, um, but in terms of the, the um, experimental control, it just was, it was, we had more control using the powder. Thank you. That's why we did it that way. What is special about the blueberry anthocyanins? Because I understand that there are anthocyanins in, say, um, black currants and uh, lots of other fruits as well. And, and then I read that even amongst blueberries, certain blueberries yes. are more superior than others. Um, can you say something about this? Is, is anything known about which particular compounds are best? or? Uh, right, can you get are, these anthocyanins anywhere else? Because blueberries are quite expensive, I suppose, as a, a fruit as well. I think they're getting cheaper, actually. 
Le is that true? Let's they they are getting maybe. cheaper. <laughs> There's more production around the world, that's for certain. And, and where I live in, uh, in North America, I can get fresh blueberries in the winter, which is only in the last few years that I've noticed that. Um, anthocyanins are in other berry fruits and, and in other foods as well. Um, um, it's, I don't think it's clear, if, uh, or to my knowledge, uh, I'm not sure that there's a difference in a particular sub-variety of anthocyanin in a blueberry versus in a strawberry, but in a whole food matrix, you've got a whole uh, host of other flavonoids potentially and other uh, potentially bioactive compounds. So there may be something unique about that that mis mixture or cluster of bioactives in a blueberry versus a strawberry, but strawberries have benefits as well, certainly. Um, probably all berries have benefits. I mean, that's a generalization, but I, I think it's probably true. Because I remember reading some research about some work that was done in New Zealand, and they showed that the effects were even better if you had a fruit salad, that you had a mixture of yes. fruits. Yes, yes. But I don't know if anybody's done any work. I mean, that, all these studies seem to be in isolation. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not aware of any human work on uh, mixtures of fruits, um, looking for cognitive benefit or other sorts of benefit. Um, but in terms of antioxidant uh, capacity and um, perhaps other measurable factors, uh, I, I, what you said is true, that I think a mixing a variety of fruits is, is beneficial. Just to ask, what would you do, how would you take this um, work forward? I mean, there are already blueberry supplements on the marketplace. Could those be improved on, or is it really in terms of the advice that you will give to people? Is this just sort of further weight of evidence to suggest that they should be taking these things? Yes, it's, it's not clear to me that a supplement is going to replicate the whole fruit in terms of the, the ingredients or this mixture that we've talked about that, that's beneficial. So at this point, um, I would advise that uh, consumers or people um, in the public consume berries. Um, and, I, and I think actually the, the research should continue with the whole fruit for a while but in, in terms of human research because we, as I was saying earlier, we just don't know enough about a whole host of issues. And I think at some point it, it would make more sense than to, to try to reduce things down to um, active and inactive compounds. We have a question in the back. Yeah, uh, Megan Brooks with Medscape has a question. She's asking, can you give more specific results on level of improvement and on what cognitive tests? Okay, the cognitive tests included uh, a verbal list learning task, which involves uh, presentation and recall of a, of a list of common words. Um, uh, the, the motor task was just a, a simple paper and pencil, two-dimensional paper and pencil line drawing task that uh, had certain rules or guidelines for the participants to follow. Um, there was a, a visual spatial memory task that involved nonverbal information, visual information. And uh, the semantic access task involved um, asking participants to produce as many uh, words as they could think of that um, were constrained to a specific semantic category within a period of time. Um, the, the level of improvement varied across these tasks um, from as little as uh, five to six percent to as much as, um, I don't, I, I shouldn't be, I don't have the figures in front of me, but as much as 20 to, to 30 percent, I think. And, we, and the results were, we had, we had significant effects for, for, the, for the, um, the spatial memory and the semantic access, and we had marginal res, uh, effects for the others. That is, trends that were close to significant but didn't reach significance. All right, do we have any other questions? All right, I think that wraps it up for this press conference. Um, thanks, everyone. The archived version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference today at 10.30 a.m. on a birth control pill for men. Thank you.